So, apa yang saya cakap tadi semua, tak dengar lah. Ke baru? Oh. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, <coughs> bila masa saya tekan meter ni? Oh, tadi. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. So, um, we are going to the new subtopic which is electromagnetic induction. Okay, so uh, before we continue, let's recap the uh, the previous subtopic which is electromagnet. Current carrying wire produces a magnetic field in the region around the wire. When current flows in a wire wound round a soft iron core, and electromagnet is produced. We have just seen that electricity can produce magnetic effects or magnetism. Can magnetism produce electricity? Okay, so uh, previously we have learned that uh, we can get a magnet from electricity. Look at the galvanometer. What happens to the galvanometer pointer when the wire moves up and down across the magnetic field? The galvanometer pointer shows a deflection to the right when the wire moves down and a deflection in the opposite direction, that is, to the left, when the wire moves up. What does the deflection of the galvanometer pointer indicate? The deflection of the galvanometer pointer indicates that there is a current flow. As the wire moves up and down, the magnetic field lines or magnetic flux are being cut. As the magnetic fluxes are being cut, an EMF is induced across the wire. This is known as electromagnetic induction. The induced EMF will cause a current to flow in the wire. This current is called the induced current. Okay. <coughs> Okay, so uh, we can produce current from a magnet. Okay, so in order for us to produce current from a magnet, we need to change the magnetic field. So how do we change the magnetic field? Is by cutting the magnetic flux. Okay, magnetic flux is actually magnetic field lines. So we can use either cutting magnetic field lines or cutting magnetic flux, okay? So as we move the conductor uh, in between of the two polarity of the magnet, we are cutting the magnetic flux, okay? So as we cut the magnetic flux, E and F is indu induced in the conductor. So when we have an E and F, then we will cause current to flow in the wire, okay? So the current that flow is known as induced current. So this is how we produce current uh, using magnet. Okay, so we are going to look at uh, one more situation. What happens to the galvanometer pointer when the wire is stationary? What happens to the galvanometer pointer when the wire is stationary in the magnetic field? The galvanometer pointer does not show any deflection, indicating that there is no current flow. Why? The magnetic flux is not being cut by the wire. Thus, no EMF is induced. 
Hence, there is no flow of induced current. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, in order for us to get induced current, uh, we must cut the magnetic flux. So for this activity, when they place the uh, conductor stationary in the magnetic field, so there is no cutting of magnetic flux, therefore there will be no current induced, no EMF is induced, thus no current, no induced current. Okay. So we, we will see another uh, situation. What do you think may happen to the galvanometer pointer when the wire moves parallel to the magnetic field? The galvanometer pointer does not show any deflection, indicating that there is no current flow. Why? When the wire moves parallel to the magnetic field, no magnetic flux is being cut, no EMF is induced, thus there is no induced current flowing in the circuit. Okay, so this is another situation where there is no cutting of magnetic flux. So when we move the conductor parallel to the magnetic field, so there is no cutting of magnetic flux, therefore no EMF is being induced, thus no current induced. Okay, so <clears throat> the basic here, for us to get induced uh, EMF and induced current, there must be cutting of the magnetic flux. Okay, so there must be uh, a relative motion between the conductor and the magnet. But if the motion is parallel to the magnetic field, there will be no cutting of magnetic flux. What will happen to the galvanometer pointer if the wire is made stationary, but the magnets are moved upwards and downwards as shown? The galvanometer pointer shows a deflection to the right when the magnets move upwards and a deflection in the opposite direction, that is, to the left, when the magnets move downwards. Why? As the magnets move up and down, the magnetic flux is being cut by the wire. An EMF will be induced across the wire and cause an induced current to flow. An EMF is induced across a conductor when the magnetic flux is being cut by the conductor. This is known as electromagnetic induction. The induced EMF will cause an induced current to flow in a complete circuit. Okay, so <clears throat> the basic here is there have to, there must be a cutting of magnetic flux in order for us to induce EMF. Okay, so it's either the conductor that move or the magnet that move. Okay, there have to be a relative motion no matter whether the conductor or the magnet that move. Okay, but if the conductor and magnet move together, uh, so there is no cutting of magnetic field, then there will be no uh, EMS induced. Okay, so we have uh, seen the, uh, the video just now. So when uh, the conductor is held stationary, there will be no deflection of the galvanometer. So when we move the conductor upward, it deflects to the left. But if it's moved downward, what happened to the deflection? Okay, it is moved down up, upward, the deflection is to the left. But if the moving is downward, the movement is downward, what happened to the deflection? of the galvanometer. 
Yes, okay, it will deflect to the opposite direction, which is to the right. Okay. <coughs> so, what happened to the... Ini, kita dah tengok tadi. Okay, sekejap. So, we are going to... Uh, just now is uh, the video showing a straight conductor cutting magnetic field. Okay, so this one is showing a uh, solenoid cutting magnetic field. So I have an can you can you hear the video? Okay, so uh, unfortunately, the video stopped here. Uh, it's supposed to show the uh, galvanoid, uh, the solenoid with less coil. Okay, so uh, in the video, it is showing that when the magnet is more faster, the deflection of the, this is a micro emitter, the deflection of the micro emitter is bigger. Okay, so uh, let's call it a uh, galvanometer. The deflection of the galvanometer is bigger. So we can relate the we can relate the um, speed of the motion for the magnet with the deflection of the galvanometer or with the induced EMF. Okay, the faster the magnet is being moved in and out of the solenoid, the bigger the induced EMF. Okay. So this is uh, what is shown in the video. Okay, so when the uh, magnet is being pushed in, we have a deflection of the galvanometer. When it is pulled out, the deflection is on the opposite side. Okay, and also when it is moved faster, the deflection is more. Okay. <clears throat> so as you can see in this uh, video, when the conduct, uh, oh, sorry, when the magnet is pushed in, okay, there will be cutting of the magnetic flux. So therefore, we will get the uh, induced EMF. Okay, so this is the first learning standard. You need to be able to describe how the induced uh, current or induced EMF is produced. Okay, so the basic is when there is cutting of magnetic flux, okay, whether uh, the conductor is a straight conductor or the conductor is being called as a solenoid, as long as there is cutting of magnetic flux, there will be an induced EMF in the conductor, hence producing induced current. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, this one, what happened to the galvanometer pointer when the magnet remains stationary in the solenoid? So, uh, 
as you can see in the animation here the magnet is being pushed in and then it stops and then it, it is pulled out so when the magnet is in the solenoid and stationary what happened to the uh, galvanometer pointer Yes. Any response? Okay, so there is no movement or there is no deflection of the galvanometer. Yes, does not deflect. Okay, so it does not deflect because there is no relative motion between magnet and solenoid. Thus, there will be no cutting of magnetic flux. Okay, so the conclusion, so we go to the conclusion for the policing of uh, the production of the induced current. Okay, when <clears throat> the straight wire is moved in the magnetic field, straight wire cuts the magnetic field lines. So induced current is produced in the wire. Okay, firstly, induced EMF is produced, then we will get induced current. So as for the uh, solenoid, uh, as long as there is a relative motion between the magnet and the solenoid, there will be cutting of magnetic flux or magnetic field lines, then induced current is produced. Okay, so this is the conclusion for the first learning standard. Okay, there should be a cutting of magnetic field in order for the current to be induced. <clears throat> or, uh, as you can see from the definition of induced current, uh, there is change in magnetic field. Okay, the change is the cutting of the magnetic field and it produces current, uh, the induced current is produced. Okay. Okay, so let's go to the next learning standard. Um, learning standard number two. Dia dah pergi ke Sekejap Kita pergi learning standard 2 dulu Okay, so for the next learning standard is uh, factors that affect the magnitude of induced current. Okay, so as you can see in the video just now where uh, the person is uh, moving magnet inside a solenoid, so there are a few factors that affect the, in, uh, the magnitude of the induced current. Okay, so the effect of uh, the factors that affect method of induced current can be explained by Faraday's law. Okay, Faraday's law states that the magnitude of, of induced EMF is directly proportional to the rate of cutting of magnetic field or magnetic flux. Okay, so the word rate here indicates that um, it involves time. Okay, so uh, the cutting of magnetic flux over time. So the higher the cutting of magnetic flux over time, so we get a bigger uh, magnitude of induced EMF. <clears throat> so as for the relative motion of the straight wire and magnet, induced EMF will increase if the speed of relative motion is increased. So uh, that was shown in the video with the solenoid. Okay. So we can also increase the uh, rate of cutting of magnetic flux if we use stronger magnet. Okay, if the magnet is stronger, the magnetic flux is more. Okay, the magnetic field lines are more. So therefore, when we move the conductor, uh, the cutting of magnetic flux will be higher. Okay, so uh, as for solenoid, okay, other than uh, speed of relative motion and other than strength of magnetic field, number of turn also uh, affect the 
uh, magnitude of induced EMF. Okay, if the number of solenoid increases, the cutting of magnetic flux is more. Logically, okay, so number of turn is less, the cutting of magnetic flux is less. Okay, so when the number of um, turn is more, the cutting of magnetic flux is more, so the uh, induced EMF is also higher. Okay, so basically, there are three factors that affect the uh, magnitude of the induced current. Okay, one is the speed of relative motion. Number two is the number of turn of solenoid. Okay, number three is the strength of magnetic field. So in order for us to increase the induced EMF, we need to increase all the three factors. Okay. So, <clears throat> based on the previous explanation, the, 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 the explanation that I just uh, explained now, uh, uh, before this, okay, so uh, the observation and inference from an experiment to investigate the factors affecting the magnitude of induced current in a solenoid. Okay, so number one, speed of movement. A magnet is moved slowly into the solenoid of tantan. So what do you think you will observe? What will be the deflection? Will the deflection of the galvanometer become bigger or smaller? Okay, so the deflection is smaller. Okay, so uh, when the deflection is smaller, it indicates that the current is smaller. So B, magnet is moved at a faster speed. So what happened to the deflection? Okay, so as the magnet is moved at a, sp a faster speed, it will deflect more. Okay, therefore the current is more. Uh, the observation is the deflection of the galvanometer. The inference is uh, our conclusion based on the observation. So inference is small current or big current. Okay. So number two, number of turn. Uh, the magnet is moved slowly into the solenoid of ten turn. So the observation should be the same as one a. Okay. So small deflection, small current. But now uh, the same situation, we move the magnet slowly, but with a different solenoid, solenoid of 20 turns. So what do you think will happen to the deflection? Okay, the deflection will become bigger. Okay, so therefore, the current is bigger. Okay, so number three, uh, we use one magnet and move the magnet slowly so the deflection is small and when we use three bar magnet so four magnet to increase the strength of a magnet we can increase the number of magnet okay so if we use uh, one magnet compared to two magnet two magnet is bigger uh, magnetic field or bigger strength okay uh, if and also we can use bigger magnet okay smaller magnet usually have a uh, less strength okay compared to a bigger magnet okay so now if we use three bar magnet instead of one we will get a big deflection okay indicating that the current is bigger okay so this is uh, the second uh, learning standard okay i think uh, for learning standard one and two is um, Straightforward, okay. So tak ada apa-apa um, problem, okay. I guess so. Uh, the first learning standard is to determine the induced EMF. As long as there is a cutting of magnetic flux, you will get induced EMF, okay. And as for the link standard two, uh, is to discuss the factor that affect the magnitude of induced EMF. So you need to explain it using Faraday's law 
Faraday's law that if the rate of cutting of magnetic flux increases, the magnitude of the induced EMF also increases. Okay, so now we come to the learning standard number three, determine the direction of induced current. So uh, before we continue with the learning standard three, uh, are there any question involving learning standard one and two? Only follow that. I said straightforward again. There shouldn't be a problem. Ole, any question? Okay, so since there is no question, we continue with the learning standard three is to determine the direction of induced current. So if we want to determine uh, direction of induced current, okay, so there are two, well, actually, uh, direction of induced current is explained by one law, which is Lenz law. Okay, however, for a straight conductor, uh, dia tak begitu sangat uh, boleh difahami lah using Lenz law. Okay, so for a straight conductor, kita just guna satu uh, rule, which is the Fleming right hand rule. Okay, so previously we use our left hand. Fleming left hand rule. Okay, and now we are using our right hand. Fleming right hand rule. Okay, for me personally, uh, to remember which hand to use for which. Uh, for the Fleming left hand rule is to get force, isn't it? Okay, so to determine the force produced from uh, interaction of current carrying conductor and magnetic field of a permanent magnet. Okay, so uh, the purpose of Fleming right hand rule, sorry, left hand rule is to get the force. So this is explanation for motor. Okay, from electric current, you get uh, motion. Okay, so we get force. So motor is our left hand. And as for uh, the induced EMF is our right hand, which is the dynamo. So if you write medical doctor, MD, okay, medical is on the left, doctor is on the right. So uh, in order for me to remember which hand to use for which, here yeah, I remember medical doctor, M on the left, D on the right, M stand for moto, D stand for dynamo. Okay, so that is my method. So you can use your own method to remember which hand to use for which. So then don't get confused. Okay, so when you sit for your exam, jangan confuse lah. Kalau confuse, habis. Because different hand is for different purpose. Okay, so for the... To, to determine direction for induced EMF or induced current, we use our Fleming right hand rule for the straight conductor. And for the solenoid, is explained by the Lenz law. Okay, as for Fleming right hand rule, the uh, placing for the fingers is the same as uh, Fleming left hand rule. Okay, for the thumb, Thumb is uh, for what? Salah tangan. Thumb. Thumb is uh, representing what? Okay. Thumb is for the force. The index finger. Index finger untuk apa? Okay. Index finger is the magnetic field. So it is always pointing towards. Okay, it is always pointing towards south. South. Okay, so uh, and the middle finger is for. Now, what is the middle finger for? For the current. Okay, very good. Okay, so uh, for left hand rule and right hand rule, the 
uh, fingers represent the same thing. Okay, for both, the thumb is for the force, the index finger is for the magnetic field and always pointing towards south. Okay, and then uh, the middle finger is for the current. Okay, for Fleming left hand rule is induced current. For sorry, for Fleming right hand rule is induced current. For Fleming left hand rule is for current that flow. Okay. Okay. So. <clears throat> Okay, let's look at the diagram here. Okay, so let's focus on uh, this one is number two. Okay, so let's focus at number two here. Uh, we have two magnets. Okay, and we have a conductor connected to a galvanometer. Conducted, sorry, connected to a galvanometer. Okay, so let's see. Uh, the first one, the wire is moving upward. So, which direction is the current? From P to Q or Q to P? Use your Fleming right hand rule. Okay, so most of you answered P to Q. So by using our Fleming right hand rule, take our right hand. Okay, so the index finger is pointing towards the south. Okay, and then uh, the wire moving upward. So our thumb is uh, pointing upward. And our middle finger is pointing towards the screen. Okay, so since this is a 2D drawing, so we can say that the current flow from P to Q. Okay, and if the wire is moved downward, so to which direction is the current? Okay, initially it is moved upward, so the current flow from P to Q. Okay, now the wire is moved downward, so the current is flowing in the opposite direction, which is Q to P. Okay, so now let's look at number three. The three is the diagram below. Okay, so uh, the wire is moved upward. So which direction is the current, from P to Q or Q to P? Okay, so that's as I said, P to Q. Some say Q to P, some say P to Q. Okay, so let's use our right hand. Okay, so our index finger pointing towards the south. Okay, south is on the left. Okay, and uh, 3A is the wire move upward. So our uh, thumb pointing upward. And our index finger is pointing towards us. Okay, so since this is a 2D diagram, we can say that the current flow from Q to P. Okay, so when the wire is moved downward, so the current will flow opposite direction, which is P to Q. Okay, so for number four, we have a conductor. Okay. And then we know the direction of current. Okay, so this is the direction of current. What we need to determine, what we need to determine now is the polarity of P and Q. So which one is south, which one is north? P or Q? Okay, 
Okay, for number four, we know the direction of current. We know the direction of motion. We just don't know the polarity of the magnet. Okay, so most of you said that P is south and Q is north. So using the Fleming left hand rule, okay, following the direction of motion, our our upper our thumb pointing upward, and then our uh, middle finger point towards us. So our index finger pointing to P. Therefore, P is south and Q is north. Okay, very good. Okay, so now. Uh, just now is for a straight conductor. We use our uh, Fleming right hand rule. Um, but now is for a solenoid. We cannot use our Fleming right hand rule because solenoid is a coil. So using Fleming left hand rule, um, tak boleh follow this, the coil. Okay. So this is explained by one law which is known as Lenz law. Lenz law said that induced current uh, in a solenoid um, well actually for the uh, straight conductor is can also be explained by uh, Lenz law okay tapi saya tak, tak use Lenz law to explain that lebih mudah guna a right hand rule okay so it says that induced current always flow in direction that oppose the change of magnetic flux that cause it. Okay, so the change of magnetic flux that cause it will make the current to flow, so it will oppose the 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 what the change. Okay, for example, we have magnet. Okay, so this is the north pole of the magnet being pushed into the solenoid. Okay, when the conduct uh, when the magnet is pushed into the solenoid there will be cutting of the magnetic flux when there is cutting of the magnetic flux we will get induced current and previously we've learned that when current flow through a solenoid the solenoid will become magnet and for a magnet there is a polarity okay and uh, Lance Law said that the direction of the current must oppose the change of the magnetic flux. So now since the North Pole is pushed into the solenoid, current flow in the solenoid, so the magnetic field that is produced by the solenoid must oppose the change of the magnetic flux. Okay, so in order to oppose the North Pole being pushed in the solenoid, what polarity should be produced at E? Okay, so in order to oppose the North Pole being pushed in, at NA, the polarity should also be north. Barulah, they oppose. Okay, so that is what uh, the Lenz law uh, explained on how to determine the direction of induced current. Okay, uh, the Lenz law is um, following, we um, can follow lah. The, the explanation of the Lenz law is according to conservation of energy. Okay, energy said that, uh, conservation of energy said energy can be converted from one um, type to another. Okay, so here we get electrical energy. So it must come from something. So in order for you to get electrical energy, work must be done. Okay, when we do work, uh, we use energy again. So uh, from that, conservation of energy, Lance Law said, in order for us to get electric energy, work must be done. So how, how to get work? Okay, so in order for us to get work, 
mesti ada oppose lah. Uh, macam North Pole going in, North Pole dekat end tu dia tolak so you get work. Barulah dapat electrical energy. Okay, so that is uh, for the land law. Dia uh, tidak uh, apa? Dia tidak bertentangan dengan any laws yang ada dalam physics. Okay, so conservation of energy said that uh, when you want to get energy, work must be done. Okay, so uh, untuk dapatkan the electrical energy, work must be done. Therefore, the direction of current must oppose the change of the magnetic flux. Boleh? Okay, so uh, after we know uh, which end is north, which end is south, okay, to determine the direction of current is by using right hand grid. Okay, remember, we use our right hand grid to determine the polarity of uh, <coughs> a solenoid <coughs> that carries current. Okay, so let's say uh, we know the direction of current. Okay, so uh, for this direction of current, uh, our four fingers is showing the direction of current. So the thumb is always pointing to the north. So north is sini. Okay, so now uh, when you are to determine the direction of electric current induced, you use this method. But uh, the difference now is we know the polarity, we don't know the direction of current. So the current flow from positive to negative is okay, so the solenoid become magnet. So using right hand grip rule, we can determine the polarity of magnet on the solenoid. So this is when current we know the direction of current. Okay, so uh, for the induced. Uh, current, we don't know the direction, but we know the polarity. So we can use the right hand grip rule. Okay. This lesson electromagnetic induction part two moving the magnet we will study three parts number one moving a magnet number two we will study the transformers and how they work number three how electricity is distributed by the national grid the first part we studied how an induced current is produced when a wire is moved cutting the magnetic field lines of a magnet. Actually, this is not the only way to produce an induced current. If the wire in the form of a coil of many turnings is fixed and the magnet moves towards the coil, this will also produce an induced current. Reversing the motion of the magnet by taking it out of the coil will produce an induced current in the opposite direction. This phenomenon can be explained like the previous case, as the wire of the coil cuts the magnetic field lines of the magnet. But a more scientific and more general explanation must be discussed. Now we need to know the reason why moving a magnet towards a wire can cause an induced current. Remember in the first part, our case was a moving wire with a magnet in place. This process produced an induced current which is explained as follows. The metallic conductor wire cuts the magnetic field lines of the magnet, causing an induced current in the wire. But now in part two, the magnet is the moving part while the wire in the form of a coil is the fixed part. And this also can be explained the same way. 
the metallic conductor wire cuts the magnetic field lines of the magnet, causing an induced current in the wire. But here we can have a more scientific and wider explanation that prepares us to have more advanced applications. For this case, we can say that the metallic conductor wire is exposed and affected by a changing magnetic field. You can also say a variable magnetic field, causing an induced current in the wire. In this part, we will study lens law. These are the two ways we know until this level to produce an induced current in a wire. The first is to move the wire in a fixed magnetic field. In this way, as we said in the first part, the direction of the produced induced current is given by Fleming's right-hand rule. This rule is discussed in the first part, moving the wire. The second way we know until now to produce an induced current is to move a magnet near a fixed coil. The direction of the induced current produced by this way is given by what we know as Lenz's law. Let us understand this law in details. When a magnet moves with its magnetic field near a coil, towards or away from it, this produces an induced current in a certain direction. According to what we had before in the electric motor, every current makes its own magnetic field. So the produced current in turn will create its magnetic field around the coil. It's clear now that we have two magnetic fields. The magnetic field of the magnet that causes the current and the magnetic field around the coil that is caused by the current. Lenz Lowe tells us that the magnetic field caused by the induced current will oppose the effect of the magnetic field of the magnet that causes the current. So according to the previous explanation, we can say that Lenz Law states that any induced current caused by a changing magnetic field will make its own magnetic field that opposes the effect of the magnetic field that created it. We have... And I'm not sorry. Is that again? It feel lines of the magnet causing an induced current in the wire that the metallic conduct. In this part, we will study lens law. These are the two ways we know until this level to produce an induced current in a wire. The first is to move the wire in a fixed magnetic field. In this way, as we said in the first part, the direction of the produced induced current is given by Fleming's right-hand rule. This rule is discussed in the first part, moving the wire. The second way we know until now to produce an induced current is to move a magnet near a fixed coil. The direction of the induced current produced by this way is given by what we know as Lenz's law. Let us understand this law in details. When a magnet moves with its magnetic field near a coil, towards or away from it, this produces an induced current in a certain direction. According to what we had before in the electric motor, every current makes its own magnetic field. So the produced current in turn will create its magnetic field around the coil. It's clear now that we have two magnetic fields. The magnetic field of the magnet that causes the current and the magnetic field around the coil that is caused by the current. Lenz Lowe tells us that the magnetic field caused by the induced current will oppose the effect of the magnetic field of the magnet that causes the current. So according to the previous explanation, we can say that Lenz Lowe states that any induced current caused by a changing magnetic field will make its own magnetic field that opposes the effect of the magnetic field that created it. We have four examples. In the first example, this is the coil, and this is the magnet that will move towards the coil. This sure will cause an induced current in the coil, but the question will be, in what direction? 
if the coil wants to oppose the effect of the magnet that is moving towards it with the north pole, the coil must generate a north pole facing the coming north to make repulsion and resist the motion of the magnet. It's clear that the far end of the coil will be a south. With the aid of right hand grip rule, the current will be in the direction shown by the right hand fingers when the thumb points with the north. Example number two. In this example, the magnet is approaching the coil, but this time with the south. This will cause an induced current in the coil, and again the question will be, in what direction? If the coil wants to oppose the effect of the magnet that is moving towards it with the south pole, the coil must generate a south pole facing the coming south to make repulsion and resist the motion of the magnet. It's clear that the far end of the coil will be a north. With the aid of the right-hand grip rule, the current will be in the direction shown by the right-hand fingers when the thumb points to the north. In example number three, the magnet is moving away from the coil with the south. This will cause an induced current in the coil. If the coil wants to oppose the effect of the magnet that is moving away with its south, the coil must generate a south pole facing the north pole to make attraction and resist the motion of the magnet away from the coil. It is clear that the far end of the coil will be a north. With the aid of the right-hand grip rule, the current will be in the direction shown by the right-hand fingers when the thumb points with the north. The last example, number four, the magnet is moving away from the coil with its north. This will cause an induced current in the coil. If the coil wants to oppose the effect of the magnet that is moving away from it with the north pole, the coil must generate a north pole facing the south to make attraction and resist the motion of the magnet away from the coil. The far end will be a south. For the fourth time using the aid of the right hand grip rule, the current will be in the direction shown by the right hand fingers when the thumb points with the north. Still on the second method of producing induced current, moving the magnet near a fixed coil. Now it's time to know how to get larger current by this way. Increasing the number of turnings of the coil can increase the intensity of the induced current produced by this method, even if we use the same magnet with the same speed. Also in this case, using a stronger magnet can cause a stronger current. And finally, Moving the magnet faster into or away from the coil can produce a stronger current. Now we nearly finished everything about the second method of producing induced current, which is moving the magnet near a fixed coil. So it will be a good idea to have a comparison between the two methods we have. The animation shows the way they produce the current. If we talk about the case, the first one shown by the diagram on the left is a case of moving wire and a fixed magnet. On the other hand, the case on the right is a case of moving magnet near a fixed wire or a coil. If we talk about the explanation, the induced current produced by the first case is explained as the metallic conductor wire cuts the magnetic field lines of the magnet, causing an induced current in the wire. It's clear that our keyword is cuts, but in the second case the induced current is explained as the metallic conductor wire is exposed and affected by a changing magnetic field, you can also say variable magnetic field, causing an induced current, and it's clear that our keyword is the changing magnetic field. And finally, if we talk about how the direction of the induced current can be predicted, in the case of the moving wire, it is given by Fleming's right-hand rule, while in the case of the moving magnet, the direction is given by Lenz Low.
If you really understood the case of the moving magnet, you will realize that it is not the story of a moving magnet near a coil. It's the story of the presence of a changing or variable magnetic field near the coil. Any changing magnetic field near the coil will cause the induced current. In this part, we will know other methods of how to get a changing magnetic field, other than moving the magnet. The first method is what we have just studied, and it's the original case moving the magnet into or out of the coil. Another method of getting a variable changing magnetic field is rotating the magnet near the coil. The rotating magnet will cause a changing magnetic field that can create an induced current in the coil. Another method to produce a changing magnetic field is an AC current. The blue coil is connected to an AC power supply. The AC current can produce a magnetic field which is continuously changing in both strength and direction. The changing magnetic field also can produce an induced current in the black coil. And the third case we just studied is the basic idea of the work of the transformers. The direction of the... Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, the video just now has, is, uh, has explained everything about the induced EMF or induced current. Okay. So, for the uh, moving magnet in a coil, uh, the video said that changing of magnetic field, but we still can use cutting of magnetic field. Okay, so walaupun uh, they kata uh, changing of magnetic field, so kalau kita gunakan cutting of magnetic field is still correct. Okay, so uh, let's look at this one. Magnet is moved toward the solenoid. What happened to the magnet? Uh, what happened when the magnet is pushed toward the solenoid? So what do we get? Okay, repulsive force produce. Um, other than repulsive force, what produce the repulsive force? North Pole of the Solenite. What produced the North Pole of the Solenite? Induced current. Okay. Well, actually, uh, the polarity of the Solenite and the induced current uh, occur simultaneously. Okay. So, firstly, when the uh, magnet is pushed toward the Solenite, there will be cutting of magnetic flux and we will get induced current okay so from the induced current uh, it produces a polarity that repel the not being pushed toward the solenoid okay so what is produced on the solenoid if current flow through it so this one is the next step but actually it, it uh, occurs simultaneously so the solenoid become electromagnet okay Push the magnet to a solenoid will produce induced current from Lenz law. What will the solenoid do in order to oppose the motion that produce the current? So that is uh, what Sutta's answer is. Uh, the solenoid must push out the magnet. Repulsive force is produced. Okay. okay. So, uh, North Pole is pushed push towards the solenoid. So, the question is, which direction is the deflection of the galvanometer? Okay, galvanometer, uh, the deflection of galvanometer does not follow the direction of current. The deflection of galvanometer point towards the uh, where the current come from, so it's opposite direction of current. Okay, so galvanometer is following the direction of electron flow. So 
uh, after you determine the direction of current for the galvanometer is opposite direction. Okay, so here, uh, what is the def to which direction is the deflection of the galvanometer to the left or to the right? Okay, Sutta's answer is to the right. What about the others? Sutta so Kalpana answer is to the left. Nadia to the left. Okay, so let's see. Uh, North Pole is pushed is pushed towards the solenoid. So we know North Pole should be on this end. Okay, to repulse, to oppose the change of magnetic field. So by using our right hand grip, so the current is like this. Okay, the current is from left to right. Okay, so galvanometer pointer always point towards the direction uh, of the electron. So it should be to the left. Okay, previously under KBSM Direction of galvanometer follow direction of current okay, under KBSM. But um, this is not accurate. When we do the experiment, the galvanometer pointer will point the opposite side, uh, sorry, the opposite direction of the current. Okay, so under KBSM, they change it uh, following the correct. Uh, the correct uh, result from the experiment. Okay, so kalau siapa-siapa yang refer to KBSM book, dia akan tunjuk galvanometer pointer follow direction of current. Okay, but under KBSM, dia dah betulkan yang betul lah. So dia akan uh, point towards the direction of electron. Okay, ya. Uh, So this is uh, the actual activity using a galvanometer. Okay, so as you can see, the direction of galvanometer is uh, opposite direction of the current. Okay, so the galvanometer is always pointing to where the current is coming from. So, bila uh, you are to determine direction of galvanometer for, uh, let's say, a uh, magnet towards a uh, solenoid, uh, then the direction of galvanometer is always opposite direction of current flow. So, as the North Pole is pushed toward the solenoid, solenoid becomes electromagnet. So, according to Lenz law, direction of current will oppose the change of magnetic field that produces it. So, by using our right hand grip, okay, we get the direction of current. So, current is from left to right. So, the galvanometer pointer will point to the left. Okay, so you follow? So, kita tengok yang ini. Okay, so this one, the North Pole is being pulled out from the solenoid. So, which direction is the galvanometer? North Pole is pulled out. So, which direction is the galvanometer pointing at?
Okay, so uh, when the nerve bone is being pulled out, to prevent it from being pulled out is opposite polarity. Okay, so therefore the south pole is produced on this end. Okay, to prevent the north pole being pulled out because Laszlo said that it must oppose. So kalau dia north juga dia repel kan, so dia push je, dia tak oppose pun. So in order to oppose, the polarity of this end should be opposite polarity. So dia akan uh, pull back the north pole. Okay, so oppose lah from the north pole being pulled up. Okay, so using our right hand grip, we get the current flowing from right to left. Therefore, the galvanometer will be pointing to the right. Okay. So this is actually from your textbook. Okay. So this is A, B, C, D, and E. Okay. So uh, what is the direction of galvanometer for A? Okay, Kalpana's answer is right. What about the others? Sutta get right, left. Nadia also get left. Okay, Ivy also get left. So let's look at the answer. Okay, current uh, flowing from left, uh, from right to left. So the governor meter pointer will point to the right. Okay, so the answer is to the right. So when you use the right hand grip, okay, so you have to follow the coil of the solenoid. Okay, so look at the diagram. Kalau guna right hand grip, uh, north is to the left end. So your thumb point to the left. And follow your fingers, your, your, the other four fingers. Okay, so actually move up and down at the back. So in front of the solenoid, the current moving up. So when you draw the direction of the current, you can see that the current will flow from right to left. So the galvanometer pointer will point to the right. Okay, follow, follow. Okay. Now look at B. What is the direction of the deflection? Okay, so now as for B, the deflection is to the left. Okay, so let's look at C. Are there any arrows? Okay, no arrows. What does it indicate? What do you think the no arrow indicate? Okay, mana is stationary. So what will happen? What will happen to the galvanometer? Okay, there will be no reflection. Okay. So uh for D, the for C, there will be no deflection. So the arrow will point in the middle. D, direction of the movement south going into the solenoid. So which deflection? Which direction is the deflection? Okay, Sutas so answer right. Sarah also answer right. What about the others? Kalpana answered left. Nadia also answered left. Okay, so let's look. Um, 
as I've told you before, please look at the solenoid carefully. And well, since this is on my screen, then so Susana Lucas. Okay, when you get your answer, uh, draw the direction of the uh, current carefully. So the current is moving from left to right. Therefore, the galvanometer pointer will point to the left. Okay, so as for E, okay, which direction will the pointer of the governor meter be pointing at? Okay, so that's answer, right? What about the others? Okay, so most of you answered, right. So the current flow from right to left, so the governometer will be pointing to the right. Okay, very good. Okay, so <clears throat> what caused the current to be produced in the conductors above? Okay, we have a magnet being pulled out from a solenoid, so we get induced current. So the question is, what caused the current to be produced in the conductor? Okay, so because there is cutting of magnetic flux. Okay, magnet moves into the solenoid, and there is cutting of the magnetic flux. Okay, B. What is the name given to the current which is produced? Okay, the current that is produced is called induced current. Okay, C. Name the law used to determine the direction of the current. What law is used to determine the direction of current? That one is a rule, yeah? Right-handed rule is the rule, it's not a law. So what law explains the direction of current in a solenoid? Okay, Lenz law, yes. Okay, so Lenz law is determined to, uh, is used to determine the direction of current. Okay, so we have come across a uh, few rules and few laws. Okay, the rule are right-hand grip, Fleming left-hand rule, and Fleming right-hand rule. Okay, so these are rules, these are method to determine direction of current or determine direction uh, or determine the polarity of the magnet. Okay, and we have two laws. One is Faraday's law, the other one is Lenz law. Okay, uh, Faraday's law uh, is explanation on how to, um, what kind of explanation? Uh, well, Faraday's law is actually explanation on factors that affect the uh, magnitude of induced current. Okay, whereas for the Lenz law, explain how we can determine the direction of current flow. Okay, so don't get confused between law and rule. Okay, when the question asks us about law, so only two laws. If the question asks us about rule, then we have right hand grip, we have left, the Fleming left hand rule, we have Fleming right hand rule. Okay, so I think that's all we have discussed uh, all the three learning standards. So let's look at this exercise. Tadi masa tiga minit lagi. Mark on the wire the direction of the induced current that flows through it. Okay, the uh, wire is moved downward. So let's say this is A and this is B. So to which direction is the current? From A to B or B to A? Okay, the conductor is moved downward. Okay, 
So the current flow from B to A. B, name the rule that is used to work out the direction of the current. Okay, very good. The rule is Fleming right hand rule. C, describe the effect of the induced current. If the wire is moved vertically upward at a low speed. Okay, induced current is small. Okay, so the induced current is small and the direction of current is opposite lah because uh, initially the, car the conductor is moved downward. So when it is moved upward, so the direction of current is opposite and the current is small. So number two, wire is moved vertically upward at high speed. Okay, the induced current is big and opposite direction. Okay, we get large current. So if the wire is held stationary in between the poles of the magnet, so what will happen to the induced current? Okay, so when the wire is stationary in between of the pole of the magnet, there will be no cutting of magnetic field, therefore no current flow. Okay, <clears throat> the direction of the induced current flow is from X to Y. What is the direction of the motion of the magnet? The current flow from X to Y. So, which direction is the motion of the magnet, uh, of the wire? M, K, L, J. Okay, use your Fleming right hand rule. And the motion of the wire is upward, M. It's M. Okay, so use our Fleming right hand rule. So follow the direction of current for the uh, middle finger. It follows the direction of current. And then uh, for the uh, index finger, point towards the south. And our thumb point upward. So the force is upward. Yes, even though we are finding force, uh, this one show induced current. This one does not show current from a power supply. So this is still related to induced current. This induced current is dynamo. So we use our left hand, uh, sorry, our right hand. Okay. So uh, on next Monday, we are going to learn about uh, generator or dynamo. Okay. We are going to look at direct current generator and alternating current generator. Okay. And after we finish all the four learning standards, I will share this uh, PowerPoint with you. Okay. And uh, on Monday or before that, on Sunday, I think, I will share a tutorial question where we are going to discuss after we finish the learning standard four. Okay. And as usual, for the tutorial, I will uh, uh, record the mark for PBD. Okay. So... Are there any questions regarding the topic today? Okay, so since there are no questions, uh, I think we stop here. Okay, we start here. And with that, thank you class.